A great way to include the community in your website is to allow for user submitted content. Gravity Forms has this feature built in. So first let's create a new form. We'll call it post submission. And then we'll add the post fields. These will map directly to a post and a draft will be created once submitted. So we'll go to the post fields. We'll add the title. We'll add the body. We can add the excerpt if we want. And then we'll add the category above the body and the post image. We can also add custom fields if our site supports it. So for example, on my site, I do have a few custom fields installed. I could choose from an existing custom field or I can fully create a new one here. We'll leave that off for now. One note about the post image is that it will get uploaded to your site, but we need to explicitly set it to be the featured image if we want it to be. We can also allow the user to set alternative text if they want. For the post body, we can set the post status, so we can set this to draft or pending review. We can set the default post author. We could also use the logged in user as the author. And then under advanced, we can also enable the rich text editor. So with that, we can set these fields to be required or not. But the last piece of data I'd like to capture is the user's name and email address. So we'll add name and then we will add email address. So let's go ahead and save this form. When we go to settings, we can go to form settings and there's not a lot of information here as far as what we're going to do with the post. That's all handled with the post data. So I will enable the anti-spam honeypot and save. We'll change the confirmation to thanks for submitting your content. We'll review it and notify you when it publishes. Save that. We can keep the default notification on and everything else looks good. So let's actually create a front end form for this. We'll go to page, add new. We'll call this submit your post. And then I'll use the slash notation here. Grab gravity forms, post submission. We'll set the page layout to look okay here. And then for the actual block, we'll disable the form title and description again, and then we'll click publish. Now, if we view this on the front end, we can fill it out. 10 ways to use gravity forms. I'll just use Laura Ipsum for the post excerpt. There are no other categories on this site besides uncategorized. We can upload an image. I will upload my LinkedIn learning photo. And then we can add a post body. Again, I'll just use lorem ipsum for this. But I will also format some of this so that we can see that in action. Maybe link some of this. And then I'll fill in my name and email address. And then I'll click submit. When I click submit, we get the custom message. And then if we go to our admin area to posts, we see a pending post here. If we preview it, we can see the featured image here and all of the content I filled out. And the author of the post is Joe Casabona. So then we could choose to publish this if we want. Now, if you want even more control over the user submitted posts, there is an add-on here called Advanced Post Creation Add-on. 
So if we install that and activate it, and then go to forms, and then go to the settings for the post submission form, you can see that plugin adds a new area called post creation. So we can create a new feed, and then we can change the custom post type. So you can see I have post or page, but I also have subscribe button or podcast. This would work great if you want people to create user profile pages or maybe job listings. We can set the status to published or I'll keep it at pending. We can change the author. We can customize the title and the content, add custom fields, set the taxonomies and enable conditional logic here. So this plugin gives us a lot more flexibility as far as where the form goes and what type of post it creates. Allowing users to submit content is great, but what if you want anyone who submitted to also be a user? With the user registration add-on, you can get that done. Let's go to forms, add-ons, and then we'll scroll to the user registration add-on. Again, all of the add-ons are in alphabetical order except for the featured payment gateways at the top. So we have the user registration add-on here. We'll click install and then activate. And then if we go to forms and click on the settings for post submission, we'll see a new section here called user registration where we can of course create a feed. So this will be create user. The username will set to the email address. The first and last name will be set appropriately. We'll make the nickname the first name. The display name is the nickname. The email address is the email. And then set password via email link. We'll set their role to contributor. And then we'll have to send this email. We can set the user as the post author, and then we can enable user activation, and we'll do that by email from WordPress. So we'll click Save Settings here, and then we'll go back to our user submission page. And we'll fill this out again. I'll use the same email address I used last time because that's not a user in the system. Then we'll click submit. And the post has been submitted or the entry has been submitted. If we go to forms, post submission entries, we can see it here. However, if we go to posts, we'll see it pending with Joe Casabona as the author. If we go to the email inbox, we'll see that we have to activate the user. So we'll click activate here. Now my account has been activated. And if we go back to posts, the author has changed to Jane. So then we can go ahead as the administrator and publish this with Jane as the author. Something worth noting here is we see the HTML markup here. That's because we had the rich editor enabled and I added in the HTML markup myself. If we go back, you'll also see that the post is in the classic editor. We can convert this to blocks, but the markup will still be there. So be sure to note that HTML characters will get escaped, but everything else is working properly. Now it's your turn. Using everything we've learned about ESPs, payments, and user registration, we'll build a simple membership signup form. Here are the requirements. Collect a user's name, email, zip, and country. Let them set their password here too. Allow them to select between monthly and yearly memberships and collect the payment through Stripe. Also create a new user for the member. Set a new custom field with their membership level. As a bonus, add the member to your ESP to keep a list of members outside of WordPress. And a couple of hints. Stripe allows for subscription feeds, but you can only set one billing cycle per feed, so you'll need to use some conditional logic. 
Gravity Forms also lets you send user emails via WordPress or via Gravity Forms notifications. We won't be modifying these in this challenge, but in a real world setting, you'll need to use the latter, that is Gravity Forms notifications, if you want to include extra information about the membership because you'd have to modify core WordPress emails otherwise. Good luck. Be sure to check out the solution video to see how I did. All right, let's go ahead and create that member form. So I will create a new form here called member registration. And then we'll add the first few fields here, name, and then email address. You'll notice that username is a new advanced field added from the user registration add-on as is password. So let's go ahead and add that because we want the users to set their own password. And then we're also going to grab their zip and country. So we'll place that here and then we will customize the address to only show zip and country. I'm going to set the default country to the United States because that is where most of my members come from. And we'll set all of these as required. Next, we need to create a membership product. So we'll go to pricing fields. We'll add a product. We'll call the product member level. We'll set the field type to be a radio button. The first choice will be monthly for $9.99. And the second will be yearly for 99. We'll get rid of the third option. We'll make this required as well. And then finally, we will add the Stripe payment gateway. We can also add the total here to just display it and make it as clear as possible for the user. So we'll do that as well. The total is dynamically generated based on which products have been selected. So if we have multiple products, the total will add all of them up. So we'll go ahead and save this form and then we'll go to the settings. First, we'll make our normal setting ads. We'll create the validation summary. I'll set the required field to asterisk. Join the club. We'll set the button text to say. I'll add the anti-spam honeypot and I'll save those settings. For the confirmation, I'll change this to thanks for joining. You should be getting an email with more information soon. And again, we can customize the notifications here, duplicate the admin notification to send this to members. We'd want to select the field here. And then we can add more information here if we want to add our membership benefits or anything like that. Under Stripe, we'll want to create two feeds here, one for each membership level. So I'll click Add New. I'll call this Monthly Feed. The transaction type will be Subscription. The subscription name will be Member Level. And then I'll add the word membership here. The recurring amount will be based on the form total. The billing cycle will be every one month. We can also set up a setup fee or add a trial here if we want. The billing field will automatically be filled out based on the address field. And then we have the email. For the description, we can set the form title or create something custom here, but we'll just leave that blank. And then we want to enable conditional logic. We only want this set if member level is monthly. So we'll save those settings. And then we'll go back to Stripe and we'll do the same thing for the yearly feed. So we'll say yearly feed here. Subscription. 
member level membership form total and then this is every one years and again we want to enable conditional logic on this for when member level is yearly this is really important because we don't want to over or undercharge our members so we'll save the settings here and then finally, I'm going to skip over the MailChimp one because I don't have a membership set up for this free MailChimp account, but you could connect to your ESP if you'd like. So the last thing I'll do is user registration. We'll create the user. We'll call this member registration. We'll set the username to be the email address. Their nickname will be their first name. Their password will be set from the password field and their role will be subscriber. We also want to create a custom meta field. We'll call this member level. And then we'll set the field to member level. So we can choose to send the user an email about their new account and we can enable user activation. I'm going to leave this unchecked because we set up the notification and I'm going to keep this checked so that they can activate their account and we'll click save settings. And now we have our user registration form. Notice that when we choose monthly or yearly, the total changes. And if we go back, we can actually see the sales area. So we can also use this section to see how many memberships we're selling.